Romans chapter 12, how do we live a life of service to God? In chapters 12 to 16, Paul gives practical instructions for the believers in mystery on how to live unto God. It is good to understand the first three cornerstones of Romans before we present our bodies a living sacrifice for Christ to live through and serve him for his glory. After we have understood our justification by faith, our standing, Rom, 1 to 5, our sanctification, our state, 6 to 8, and God's dispensational change, 9 to 11, then we are ready to serve. God is dispensing grace to the world because of the cross of Christ and will save any sinner who believes what his son has done before the rapture. We have been educated in the fundamental doctrine in his word with the help of Christ's life, his righteousness, his spirit in us, chapters 1 to 11. However, while our standing, 1 to 5, is that we are complete in Christ, but our state, philosophy, 2 19, 20, 6 to 8, is our conduct or walk and needs to match our standing which requires spiritual growth, understanding what God tells us in his word, believing it, and applying it. We have eternal life and his spirit. Romans 12 verses 1 and 2 I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, and acceptable, and perfect, will of God. Paul continues the paragraph he began in 11.13 speaking to the Gentiles. He beseeches us based on the mercies of God who has concluded all people in unbelief, 1132, so he can have mercy on all during Israel's national blindness, the dispensation of grace or Gentile salvation opportunity, until the rapture, Rom, 1125. We are to present our bodies a living sacrifice for Christ to live through and to be transformed by the renewing of our minds by his word. We have been set free from sin ruling us as we walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, 8 colon 1, 4, we can live holy lives that prove. God's good and acceptable and perfect will. God's will in this context is for Jews and Gentiles to be saved into the body of Christ and live right. We are to know in our mind what God said about us, reckon it to be true in our hearts, and yield our bodies in service to Him. Since Jesus Christ died and rose again for us, it is only reasonable that we should want to serve him. As the hymn goes, O Jesus, Lord and Savior, I give myself to thee, for thou, in thy atonement, didst give thyself for me. My life I give, henceforth to live, O Christ, for thee alone, living for Jesus by Thomas O. Chisholm, 1917. The old man, who we were in Adam, was spiritually crucified with Christ, so now Christ, who is our life, can live his life through us, Rom 6 colon 3 dash 6, Colossians 3 verse 4. Christ who lived a perfect life and kept the law perfectly is the new man that now lives in us. We have his spirit in our own souls. Our bodies are earthen vessels that house a treasure, the life of Jesus in and through us, 2 Cor 4 colon 7 dash 11. The magnitude of what it means to have Christ living through us is hard to understand. But by faith, we believe what the Bible says, Gal 2.20, Colossians 1 verse 27. When we receive our glorified bodies and fly around in heaven, the light that shines in us will be his light. This life is not about us, but about Christ and what he has done and serving him and his people. Christ in us is holy. We are accepted because of him, F. 1 colon 6, Satan is the God of this world, 2 core. 4 colon 4, and the prince the power of the air, F. 2 colon 2. We need to make sure that we are not wasting our time and being distracted by worldly pursuits that have no eternal value. We are not to be conformed to this world, we are to be conformed to the image of his son, Rom. 829. We conform to Christ by reading, studying, and meditating on his word, Colossians 3 verses 16 and 17. We are renewing, ongoing, our minds by reading and studying the Bible daily, F. 4 colon 22 dash 24, Colossians 3 verses 6 to 13. Then we can have the mind of Christ, 1 Cor. 2 16, and make the right decisions because we will think like Christ. We need to control our minds moment by moment, 2 Cor. 10 colon 5. 
We need to reprogram our minds with the truth of His Word rightly divided. As adults, we need to join into what God is doing, we prove and promote His good, and acceptable and perfect will, 1 Tim 2 colon 4. We need to walk by faith and be led by the Spirit, 2 Cor 5 colon 7, Gal 5 16, God's word is now complete, so we do not expect God to speak to us in any other way. Colossians 1 verse 25. 12 colon 3 dash 8 for I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Paul gives practical instructions for our service to the believers, 12 colon 3 dash 16, because of the grace given unto me. God made Paul his apostle of the Gentiles. God is good to the Gentiles because of Israel's unbelief, not because we are wonderful. The proper way for a believer to think of himself is to not think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think, but to think soberly, realistically. God has given everyone the measure of faith, which grows as we study his word, 1017. The Romans received the spirit and sign gifts from the Lord Jesus Christ not because they were special, but for the edifying of the church when it was in its childhood, 1 Cor. 13 8-13 Sign gifts were still in effect when Romans was written in Acts 20 and did not cease until Acts 28. There are many members in our one body or group, 1 Cor. 12-12-14 As one body in Christ, we are members one of another, we are on the same team. Each member functions differently in the body of Christ in their service for God. We are one organism, agency, group, or team, the one new man, F. 2.15, we bring different skills and strengths to the group. Everyone has something to offer or share. Serve others like waiters in a restaurant. We use what we have learned for the benefit of all. Paul mentions several gifts and encourages them to use them well. Prophecy, ministry, teaching, exhortation, warning, giving, ruling, governing, and showing mercy. 12 colon 9-16 Serve the body of Christ. Love is to be genuine without hypocrisy, not false or with an ulterior motive. Hate, detest, evil, as God does, but cleave, cling, to what is good. Be kind with warm affection one to another with brotherly love and honor put others first and not yourself. Be interested in other people and their welfare. The most loving thing we can do is to share the gospel. Do not be lazy in business, be fervent, enthusiastic, serving the Lord. Rejoice in hope of the rapture, patient in tribulations, sufferings, continuing instant in prayer to God often. 1212, one type of prayer is to pray the instant a need comes to our minds. Share your resources with others, including money to a worthwhile cause, person, or ministry. Cultivate being hospitable, invite and care for people in your home or restaurant, etc. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Speak well of others and do not speak badly of them. Be joyful with those who rejoice, and cry along with those who are sad, empathize. Be of the same mind one toward another. 1216, we in the body of Christ should be thinking the same thing as we follow Paul to follow Christ, 1 Cor. 11 colon 1. Treat people kindly regardless of social standing. Be humble and avoid feelings of superiority. Don't think you are something special because we are all sinners saved by God's grace. 12 colon 17 dash 21 serve the lost. Do not pay back any man evil for evil. Be honest in your dealings in the sight of all men, have just measurements. Do an honest day's work. As far as it is in your power, live peacefully with all men. Paul gently says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, 12 19, instead, leave room for and trust that God will judge rightly, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore if thine enemy hunger, feed him, if he thirst, give him drink, for in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head, 12 19, 20, Paul quotes D.U.T. 32 colon 35, Proverbs 25 verses 21 and 22. 
Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. 1221. Show kindness and be nice to your enemies because then they may turn to God, or God will punish them more when he sees their injustice toward you. If we return evil for evil, we have been overcome by evil. But if we do not seek revenge, but do good to all men, Gal. 610, including our enemies, then we have overcome evil with good. Then evil has failed to affect our inner peace, Gal. 522, and to distract us from God's purposes, 2 Cor. 4 colon 5. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Romans 12 verse 12 KJB. Romans chapter 13 Living with Government. 13 colon 1 4 Obey Government. Paul wants every soul to be subject to government laws and orders. Human government was God's idea. God has set up governmental structures, authorities, in heaven and on earth. Colossians 1 verse 16 F. 121. It is the office of government that God has ordained, not the men that fill those offices. Those who resist government and its structure arranged by God bring judgment on themselves. Damnation. In this context is punishment from government for doing wrong, not going to hell. When we politely obey, we are not likely to get in trouble with our government and will be praised for cooperation. Generally, the ruler is there for our good, to protect us. Evil is deterred and restrained by strong rules that are reinforced with punishments. The punishment should fit the crime. 13.5-11 Paul wants the believers to subject themselves as model citizens to obey the rules and avoid the wrath of authorities, but also in order to have a clear conscience. We should not only obey because the government says so, but because our conscience tells us what is right and wrong. You pay taxes for the cause of maintaining law and order. Therefore, pay your taxes and customs and pay respect to your leaders who do their best to rule righteously. God is the highest authority, therefore there are exceptions. When government disobeys God, we should obey God rather than men, Acts 4 19, 5 29. Pay your bills, your monthly payment if you take a loan. Owe no man anything, but to love one another. Love is seeking the other person's highest good. When we love others, we fulfill the law. God considers us as adult sons who can do what is right without having to follow a list of rules. More people are one to God by love than arguments. Christians who walk with the love of Christ in them have something that others recognize and want. They are the best citizens and the best witnesses for Christ. He that loves another has fulfilled the law. 13 colon 8, 10. Paul lists the last five of the Ten Commandments here because they are the ones that deal with our relationship to others. He mentions all except keeping the Sabbath in his writings. All the Sabbaths are signs for Israel, Ezek. 2012. When we walk in the Spirit, we Fulfill the righteousness the law of God was meant to produce. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 13 colon 9 briefly sums up these commandments. Love does no harm to others. Love is the fulfilling of the law. God's law was given to show us our sin. 319, 20, Deuteronomy. 31, 26. Human nature is self-centered, so the only way we can ever keep God's law is for Christ's Spirit to live through us as we let His doctrine through Paul reprogram our minds. 13,11-14 and that, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Knowing the time, the time of Israel's partial blindness when Gentiles have been grafted in and given an opportunity for salvation based on God's grace. It is this present time of suffering in which we now live, 818. We suffer because we are surrounded by unsaved people, family, and friends who we want to be saved. God has interrupted and postponed Israel's prophetic program and inserted the dispensation of grace which he began with Paul's salvation in Acts 9, Acts 9 verse 15, 2 Cor, 5 colon 15-19, 1 Tim, 1 15, 16. Notice the urgency to awake and serve God. Time is running out. 1 Corinthians 7 verses 29 to 31. We have a short life on earth, PSA, 90 colon 10, 
12, James 4 verse 14, so wake up and share the gospel with unbelievers so they can join the body of Christ and not be left behind at the rapture and come to the knowledge of the truth, 1 Tim. 2 colon 4, so they will have some more rewards at the judgment seat of Christ, 2 Cor. 5 10, 2 Tim. 2 15, 4 colon 8. Before Paul wrote Romans, he described our blessed heavenly hope for the body of Christ in other letters, so he takes it for granted the Roman believers possess and have read them, 1 Cor. 1551, 52, 2 Cor. 5 colon 1, 1 Thess. 1416, 17. The last days in the dispensation of grace have been in effect for a long time, 2 Tim. 3 colon 1 5. Paul expected Christ's imminent return to rapture us to come at any time. So now nearly 2,000 years later we are nearer than before. We are looking for our Savior Jesus Christ to catch us up in the air to Himself, the blessed hope of the rapture, Titus 2 verse 13. Our time period is not forever, it is short, limited, the night is far spent, the day is at hand the time when God would have sent the tribulation had not the dispensation of grace begun is far spent. The day or dispensation of grace is here and the day of our rapture could come at any time. Israel's day will be at his return to them. We are living in this present evil world, Gal. 1 colon 4, serving our Lord as his ambassadors during a time of apostasy, 2 Tim. 1 15, and waiting to be called home to heaven. The day of Christ, when we are with him, will soon be here. Let us deny ungodliness and use our time wisely. Stop behaving like the lost. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Ephesians 2 verse 2 Cast off the works of darkness, worldly lusts often done at night, and let us put on the armor of light. 13 12 Live soberly, righteously, and godly as in Titus 2 verse 12. Christ is light. The armor of light is really the doctrine, 617, given to us through Paul and Christ's Spirit living through us, 12 colon 2. The amount of sound doctrine a person has in their inner man, spirit and soul, helps us to function effectively. To have the mind of Christ, 1 Cor. 216, we study and believe all the word of God rightly divided so we can know Christ's sound doctrine and use it to fight against Satan's false doctrine. Put on the whole armor of God, all the word of God rightly divided, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Ephesians 6 verse 11. Let us walk, live, honestly, as in the day, live as in the day when Christ is with us, not as in the night is when he is not. We are not to waste our time on earth, not in writing, reveling, partying, and drunkenness, not in chambering lewd indulgence, and wantonness, undisciplined, reckless, not strife and envying, arguing with people, and wanting what they have. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh, to fulfill the lusts thereof. 13 13 14 Paul reminds us to keep the flesh in subjection and not let it have a chance to lust, 1 Cor. 9 colon 24 27, Gal. 5 16, Rom. 8 colon 1, 4. Decide to walk in the Spirit because the law energizes the sinful flesh, 7 13, 8 colon 1, 4. We are to say no to our flesh with its sinful lusts and let Christ's Spirit live in us and through us, 7 colon 6, 8 colon 1 4, 13, 12 colon 1, 2. We are in Him and He is in us, Colossians 1 verse 27, 2 10. Christ is the light and truth, John 1 colon 9, 8 colon 2, 14 colon 6. The law that we follow now is, the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, 8 colon 2. We have the Spirit of Christ, 8 colon 9, in us. Our salvation was settled when we believed. Now Christ is our life as we walk in love, as Christ. also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor, f. 5 colon 2, Christ was a pleasant smell to God, and we should be like him. What about Hebrews to Revelation? 
These letters are written to help the circumcision in the world to come, post-rapture, whereof we speak, Heb, 2 colon 5. A map of Paul's apostolic journeys which includes Illyricum. 18. Thrace. Rome. Three taverns. Forum of Appius. Citrus Minor. Paul spends two years preaching the gospel as he awaits his appeal to Nero. Ta. Putili. Tyrrhenian. C. Malta. Sicily. Messana. Italia. Pompili. City. Paul's first. Journeys. Regium. Syracuse. Paul's missionary. Paul's voyage to Rome. Missionary journey. Paul's second missionary journey. Paul's third missionary journey. P. Illyricum. Adriatic Sea. Brundisium. Tarentum. Ship lost in storm. Certus Major. Zero. Macedonia. Luke joins Pot. Paul restores life to young Eutychus Amphipolis Nepolis, Olympia, Berea Thessalontia, Larissa, Delphi, 100, Echla, Jean, Athens, Sparta Cyclades, Islands, Cyrenaica, Re, Paul speaks to the Areopagus, Cyrene, Phoenix Crete, Cotta Lacia Fair Havens. 200 billion, 100 million, 200,000, 300 kilometers. Troas. Mediterranean Sea, 300 miles. Samini. Nidus. Black Sea. Adramidium, Byzantium Heraclea, Istanbul, Asia Ansi, Pergamum Sebaste, Ephesus Tripolis. K. Rhodes, Lycia, Phrygia, Myra, Proconsul Sergius Paulus, Converted, Bithynia and Pontus, and Syra, Ankara, Seleucia, Kremna Lustra Pamphylia, Galatia, Alexandria, Paul and Barnabas mistaken for gods, Paphos, Porcius Fetus sends Paul to Rome to appeal to Caesar. Jerusalem Conference A.D. 49. Salamis, Cyprus, Egypt, Memphis, Sinope, Parnassus, Tavium, Cappadocia, Archelais, Cilicia, Tarsus, Caesarea Maritima Antipatris. Past resumes his, Derb Missionary Trave, Commagene, Antioch, Sidon, Judea, Syria, Jerusalem. Paul was more than a missionary because he was the one apostle chosen by Jesus Christ from heaven to form the body of Christ in this dispensation of grace. His journeys were apostolic, he alone says according to my gospel. Romans chapter 14 The Weaker Brother and Debatable Things 14 colon 1 4 Having just finished saying the night, the dispensation of grace, is far spent, is towards the end, and the day of our gathering together, 2 Thess. 2 colon 1 Unto him, rapture, is at hand, Paul explains the weaker brother principle using the issue of food. Except the weaker brother that does not understand the different way Christ is dealing with the body of Christ and mix Peter and Paul and try to help them, remember we used to be like them. Treat the weaker believer with extra care. If they follow Christ's earthly ministry, they will be confused and legalistic. Saints who are not strong in Pauline doctrine should be accepted as long as they are willing to learn and be taught. The purpose is to teach them, not to argue about minor issues. Someone who is following Christ's earthly ministry may not want to eat the sausage on their pizza. Pauline believers may eat all foods even that offered to idols, while the weaker brother may abstain and some eat only herbs or vegetables, 1 Cor. 8 colon 7 13. Do not despise a person because of what they eat, and let not him who is particular about what they eat judge someone who eats all things. What a person eats or does not eat is not the important thing. If a person has trusted in Christ, that is the main thing. 
God has received us both, one core. 12 colon 12 25. Do not judge other believers regarding debatable things, we do not know their motives. There is liberty in Christ. God will straighten them out with his word. Rather help the believer to follow Christ's ministry from heaven through Paul, 1625, and learn how to be rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Tim, 2 15. We are to stand in the faith firm in Paul's instruction to us, 1 Cor, 15 13, 14 colon 5, 6 Paul knows that some of the Jewish body of Christ members may find it difficult to stop their customary dietary traditions and feast days and he wants the Gentile believers to be patient with them because God will use scripture to help them sort out these minor issues for themselves over time. Eating or not eating does not commend us to God, 1 COR. 8 colon 8. Paul said, one person believes one day is more important than another, and to others, all days are the same. Now in our day of Gentile opportunity, 11, 13, 25, we are not under Israel's laws, 6, 14, 9, colon 4, and all days are alike and important, Colossians 2, verses 16 and 17. Let everyone be fully persuaded in his own mind in what he believes. We should be fully persuaded in our minds that we are not Israel and we have no special holy days. Gal. 4 10, 11, Colossians 2 verses 16 and 17, Philosophy. 2 15, 16. The Sabbath was a sign between the Lord and Israel to set them apart from other nations. Whoever did not keep it was to be killed. Exodus 31 verses 12 to 15. The Sabbath represents the millennium. We cannot force someone to be saved or to come to understand right division. If they have no interest, we should look for those who do, but not to give up on them too soon. We do not want to harden them to the gospel or turn them off to the message of grace. Perhaps they will listen in the future. Even if the time never comes, so be it. They will learn when they get to heaven. Since God does not force saved people to read their Bibles and they answer to God, how much more, then, should we not force weaker brethren to learn the truth of God's word rightly divided? We voluntarily abstain from certain practices for their sake. Some people who are not aware of the dispensation we are living in today may think that they would be more acceptable to God if they share in Israel's holy days. Gal. 4 colon 9-11 we do all things unto the Lord, Colossians 3 verses 23 to 25. 14 colon 7 dash 10 None of us lives or dies to himself, we live for the Lord. Whether we live or die we are the Lord's and represent Christ as his ambassadors to others. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living, dead or alive believers. 14 colon 9 He knows the motives, not us. Why do you judge your brother? Why do you set your brother aside as not important? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. 14.10, Christ will judge us all for service at the judgment seat of Christ. We are not to judge each other, or even ourselves, 1 Cor. 3 colon 8 dash 15, 4 colon 3 dash 5. God's word is like a fire, the perfect standard measure by which all things will be judged, Je. 23.29. God does the work through us, and we get the reward, so we will then give him all the glory. We are in. Training here, for reigning there. 2 Cor 1 14, 5 colon 9, 10, Colossians 3 verses 24 and 25, 2 Tim. 2 12, our motivation is love and gratitude for his loving sacrifice of himself for us. His love compels us to allow him to do good works through us, Gal. 2.20 We live and die unto the Lord, for we belong to him. We are his purchased possession, F. 1.14, bought with his blood, Acts 20 verse 28, 1 Cor. 6.19.20 That is grace. Grace is unearned and undeserved favor. Our operating system is love because of his grace, not the law, 2 Cor. 5 14, 14 colon 11 17 Everyone will bow their knee to the Son of God and confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, philosophy. 2 10, 11 We will gladly bow at his judgment seat. Saved Israel shall bow to him and glory, ISA. 
45-23-25. We will all personally give an account to God for how we spend our time on earth. Let us, therefore, not judge another believer's ministry, but instead, make sure we do not cause them to stumble or prevent them from understanding what God is doing today so they can receive a reward at the judgment seat of Christ. We are to be concerned with their spiritual well-being and seek to make the weaker believer stronger. When we use the mind of Christ, 1 Cor. 2.16, to judge all things, then we judge righteously. Paul is certain that there is no food that is unclean of itself, the best meat was offered to idols. Paul knows it was just meat, the devils, fallen angels in the second heaven, behind the idols do not affect the food. Under grace, we have the liberty to do all things, Gal. 5 colon 1, but not everything is expedient or profitable, 1 Cor. 6 12, but if your brother in Christ is concerned about eating food offered to idols then if you serve him that you are not being charitable, loving. Do not ruin another man's spiritual walk by what you eat or drink, 1 Cor. 8 colon 7 13, Christ died for them. 4. Brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Galatians 5 verse 13. Let not our good be evil spoken of. 14 16. Let not our good suffer because of our thoughtlessness. Our good is sharing the gospel and the wonderful, liberating sound doctrine found in Paul's epistles, Colossians 1 verses 20 to 26. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. 1417, Paul wants righteousness, peace, and joy among believers. Focus on the things God is doing, not on petty things such as what a man eats or drinks. What we ourselves eat should be irrelevant. God cares about people receiving his son's righteousness by faith and having peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, 322, 5 colon 1. When the lost are saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, 1 Tim, 2 colon 4, they rejoice evermore, 1 Thess, 5 16, over being forgiven of their sin, being seated with Christ in the heavenly places, given all the spiritual blessings, and Christ living in them, f. 2 colon 6, 1 colon 3, Gal. 220. That is why Paul says, If meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standest, lest I make my brother to offend. 1 Cor. 813. Let us concentrate on eternal things. 14 colon 18 23 Serve God spiritually. He that thoughtfully, lovingly, courteously, kindly, lovingly minister to others with righteousness, peace, and joy are acceptable to God and approved of men. Keep the peace and edify others by helping them mature in the word of God rightly divided. Paul wants peace between Jews and Gentiles in the body of Christ and between strong and weak believers. Sometimes it is best to go along with things we know really do not matter in order to keep the peace so we can have a chance to edify. For example, we may not want to serve pork chops to brothers or sisters who believe they are to follow Israel's dietary laws. So as to not offend them and to have more of a chance to edify the person on eternal matters later, we may serve them chicken instead. We are adult sons of God and stronger brothers because of the sound doctrine we have learned from Paul. Our conduct is to be on a higher plane as we walk by faith and not by sight. Do not destroy the work of God because of food. God is patiently working in the weak believer to make him stronger. It took us a long time to come to the truth and it will them. It is fine to eat all foods, but not everyone knows this and may be offended. We should voluntarily abstain from certain dietary practices for the sake of the weaker brother. If you know we have the liberty to eat all things, keep it to yourselves, but if a weaker brother thinks you are eating something that is against God's law, that could wound his conscience, 215. It is a sin to go against our conscience. Romans chapter 15 Paul's ministry to the Gentiles. 15 colon 1, two others infirmities in this context is the following of religious rules by those weak in Pauline sound doctrine. We should put up with the weaker brother that may hold on to Jewish traditions and not think only about ourselves, so we may have a chance to do good and edify them. 
We all used to be mixers of Peter and Paul or weaker brothers, but now we are stronger brothers and sisters if we understand the mystery given to Paul. When we understand Paul's distinctive apostleship and his sound doctrine from Christ, we are more likely to walk in the Spirit, Gal. 5.16, and put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh, to fulfill the lusts thereof. 13.14. Christ went to Israel in spite of their unbelief because that is what the Father wanted him to do, and we should be willing to help those who are weak in Pauline truth, immature in sound doctrine, and have become stuck under the law because they follow Peter and believe that the body of Christ began in Acts 2 instead of Acts 9. The dispensation of grace and the body of Christ began when Christ saved Paul on the road to Damascus in Acts 9. All of us brothers and sisters who are strong in the faith should be careful when helping those who are weak in sound doctrine. Edify or build up others in the word, do not tear them down over petty differences. Teach the rightly divided word of his grace, which is able to build you up, Acts 20 verse 32. Try to help people who are ignorant and blind to the understanding that God began a new dispensation during Israel's partial national blindness, 1125, so all nations can be saved and live eternal in the heavens, 2 Cor. 5 colon 1. 15 colon 3 dash 6 for even Christ pleased not himself, but, as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. Paul quotes PSA. 69 colon 9. Christ bore the shame of those who shamed him, PSA. 22,6-8 Christians are to follow the example of Christ, who did not live to please himself, philosophy. 2,5-8 So we should be able to bear a little shame from a weaker brother who may be resistant to sound doctrine because they don't understand it or those who criticize us. We should be willing to suffer affliction and reproach for the truth just as Christ did from those he came to save, John 1 verse 11. We are to follow the example of Christ who did not live to please himself. Notice how Paul points us to Jesus as our example when we know that Paul suffered a lot of reproach from the Jews and also from the Corinthian brethren. What Paul just quoted in PSA, 69 9 is for our learning. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. 15.4 God's love, justice, grace, and mercy throughout the Bible comforts us and gives us hope. We can learn from all the Bible rightly divided. Paul also suffered reproach, 1 Cor. 9.19-23 we should be willing to suffer reproach for the lost so they may be saved, and those weak in Pauline sound doctrine. Yeah, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. 2 Timothy 3 verse 12 We gain spiritual comfort of the scriptures by experience. The Bible is spiritual nourishment from our head in whom are hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Colossians 2 verses 2 to 3 We must view all the Bible from a Pauline perspective. All the Bible is for us, but not all of the Bible is to or about us. I believe that God was killing two birds with one stone so to speak, and that he was sharing information with Israel that he knew the body of Christ could profit from. That is why Paul says that all scripture is profitable, 2 Tim 3 16, 17. We will only get the profit out of the Bible that God has for us if we study it diligently rightly dividing. The God of patience provides consolation, comfort, as we in the body of Christ follow Paul, 1 Cor. 11 colon 1, we are to be like-minded with Christ willing to bear the reproach of others. We glorify the Father of our risen Lord Jesus Christ and are of one mind and one mouth when we follow what he said to us through Paul. We unite behind his apostle Paul. Receive each other and those weak in the faith that mix Peter and Paul. They are weak for they are saved, but unlearned in Pauline truth, nevertheless God received them and us into the body. 15.7-12 For this reason, we are to receive the weaker brother and try to help them come to Pauline truth as Christ has also received us to the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God. To confirm the promises made unto the fathers, 15,8, Deuteronomy, 9,5. Now Paul said that Christ was a minister to the Jews first, Rom, 
1.16 when he was on earth in the previous dispensation so that Israel could save the Gentiles in prophecy. He quotes several Old Testament scriptures about Gentile salvation and prophecy in the future kingdom. Christ's earthly ministry to Israel confirmed the promises of eternal life and so on that God made unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, his twelve sons became the twelve tribes. Christ came to Israel so that the nation of Israel could be saved and then be a kingdom of priests to save Gentiles in prophecy, Exodus 19 verses 5 and 6 ISA. 61 colon 6 God intended to use his nation to bless all nations, Genesis 12 verse 3, with the opportunity of salvation saying, In thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, Genesis 22 verse 18, Gal. 3 colon 13 dash 16. Christ let the woman of Canaan know that the Gentiles will be blessed after the overflow of Israel's fullness, Matt. 15 colon 24 dash 28. There is a parallel in the two programs because Gentiles can be saved in both, but the Gentiles in Israel's program will not be on the same level with Israel because the middle wall of partition will be up. So that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy as it is written, for this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles, and sing unto thy name, PSA. 1849 Christ wants Israel to confess, declare, him to the Gentiles in prophecy and sing to his name. Whenever Paul says as his end that means he is quoting the Old Testament. Gentiles saved through Israel in prophecy should praise God. As they will, we should praise the Lord, give him honor, and sing to him. Just as the Gentiles in prophecy will rejoice when they are saved in the millennial kingdom, we should rejoice now that we are saved. And again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. Psalms 117 verse 1. And again, Isaiah saith, there shall be a root of Jesse, King Jesus, ISA. 11 colon 1, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust, in the future kingdom. 15 12, Isaiah 11 verse 10. Jesus Christ is the root, life giver, that shall come out of Jesse, David's seed line, and rule over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. There is a pattern that progresses, the Gentiles hear the word, PSA. 1849, Gentiles rejoice with the Jews, Deuteronomy. 32 colon 43, all the Gentiles, praise. God, PSA. 117 colon 1, the Gentiles trust Christ and enjoy his millennial reign, ISA. 1110. The Gentiles can believe in Messiah and join the Jews in prophecy, so allow the Jews to believe Paul's gospel and join with us Gentiles in mystery. The Lord loves us, the body of Christ, just as much as he loves Israel. 1513, 14 Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope, through the power of the Holy Ghost. I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. 1513, 14. Paul says now and switches to joy and peace from the God of hope in the present dispensation. We can be generous in sharing our knowledge because we abound in hope of the rapture. God has always wanted to save the Gentiles in every dispensation. The wonderful thing is that today Jews can be saved into the body of Christ in God's time of salvation opportunity for the Gentiles by joining them. But in the kingdom, God will give the Gentiles a 1,000-year opportunity to be saved in Israel's program. Paul is persuaded that the believers in Rome understand the mystery. He knows these saints already knew that Christ wanted to save Gentiles in Israel's program and in his mystery program into the body of Christ. Daniel Webster's 1828 Dictionary definition of admonish is to warn, correct, notify of a fault, to reprove with mildness. It is best to correct someone who we notice has a wrong understanding, privately. Paul trusts that the Romans believers are full of goodness and can admonish each other with their knowledge of his word, but he still boldly wanted to be certain to establish them in the fundamental knowledge that he lays out in Romans. They know that Paul has a special commission to reach the Gentiles with the gospel and to share the mystery with all believers, apart from going through Israel's priests. The churches Paul founded were busy making copies of the letters from him that were inspired by God and most likely had copies of all his letters, 1 Tim 3.15. 
There was no need for Paul to repeat what he said about being caught up or the resurrection in a twinkling of an eye because they had read that already, 1 Thess. 4 17, 1 Cor. 1552. 1515, 16 Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort, as putting you in mind, because of the grace that is given to me of God, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. 1515, 16. Nevertheless, Paul says he has written boldly to the believers in Rome and reminds them that God has made a dispensational shift from Israel to the Gentiles. Paul describes the grace that was given him by God in 1516, he was appointed by Christ to be his minister to purify the Gentiles, Acts 26 verses 16 to 18. Paul did not take that office by himself, God chose to give Paul that authority, Acts 9 verse 15. Christ enabled Paul who was a blasphemer of the Holy Ghost, 1 Tim, 1 12, 13, by joining in the stoning of Stephen, to nevertheless, be his minister. Christ said blasphemy of the Holy Ghost would not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come, Matt, 12 31, 32. Therefore, Paul could only be forgiven in the new dispensation God inserted. Paul wants to be proud of the Gentile believers in mystery when Christ presents us to the Father, 1 Thess. 3.13. What an apostle's heart he had. It will be a privilege for all of us to meet him. The gospel of God appears seven times in the King James Bible, six in Paul's writings, and once in Peter's, 1 Peter 4 verse 17. The gospel of God is the basic prophesied formation of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection for sins. Both Peter and Paul preached the basic gospel of the Redeemer for both groups. But Peter emphasized the gospel of the kingdom and Paul the gospel of Christ. Peter said that Christ was the king of the Jews to sit on the throne in the coming kingdom. Paul preached Christ crucified and risen for our justification by faith, 424, 25. The gospel of Christ is clear in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 and 4. So what is the difference between Paul's gospel and Peter's? Paul said Christ died for our sins, Jews and Gentiles in mystery, apart from Israel. Paul never said that the body of Christ would live in a kingdom on earth but in heavenly places, f. 2 colon 6, 2 cor, 5 colon 1. Gospel means good news. There is more than one gospel in the Bible but there is only one that saves today, Paul's. Paul has the authority to instruct the body of Christ on how to live in mystery so that the body of Christ will be acceptable to God being sanctified, set apart for service, by the Holy Ghost. Today, Christ is manifested to the world through the believer, 1 Tim, 3 16, 15 colon 17 23 Paul could glory in the authority Christ gave him. He was made his minister in those things that pertain to God. Paul said that since he has received this apostleship therefore he concentrates on the commission and authority Christ gave him. Paul said he does not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not worked by me to make the Gentiles obedient, believe and obey, by word and deed by what Christ gave Paul to say and do. Christ empowered Paul to do the supernatural signs of an apostle, 2 Cor. 12 12, it was the power of the Spirit of God, 15 19, working in Paul. We have that same spirit in us even if signs have ceased. That power helped Paul fully preach the gospel of Christ to the Gentiles from Jerusalem round about to Illyricum. After the uproar in Ephesus, which was a mob that chanted for two hours and basically wanted to tear Paul apart, Paul went to Macedonia, then to Illyricum, and then down to Corinth. After salvation, we can also speak the truth and do good works as we serve God just like our pattern Paul, 1 Tim. 116, Paul is our pattern, so we should copy what he does. Those things, which ye have both learned, and received, and heard, and seen in me, do and the God of peace shall be with you. Philosophy 4 9. In order to live a godly life, we must have the sound doctrine found in Paul's epistles built up in our inner man. When we do that we have peace and are in God's will, 1 Tim, 2 4, 
15 20 23 Paul said, I endeavor to preach the gospel, not where others have preached him, so I would not build on another man's foundation, Peter's message. Paul broke up new ground. But as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, and they that have not heard shall understand. Paul quotes ISA 52 15. Paul quotes a transdispensational verse. God wants people to hear about him in every dispensation. Christ is the foundation for both. Prophecy and Mystery Paul was commissioned to preach to those heathen, unsaved Jews and Gentiles who had not heard about a chance for salvation, while Peter and his group ministered to the saved Jews, the circumcision who had believed the gospel of the kingdom, Gal. 2 colon 9 this is the way Paul did not build on Peter's foundation message. In prophecy, the Jews needed to be saved first so they could be priests to the Gentiles in the kingdom, Acts 11 verse 19. Christ sent Paul to preach to those who had not seen or heard the gospel, Acts 26 verses 16 to 18. Christ spoke to Paul by revelation, and the Holy Spirit also used the Old Testament scriptures. For the cause of preaching to those who had not heard, Paul had been hindered from coming to them in Rome. Paul had been busy preaching to the heathen. But now Paul does not have a place left to preach in those parts. Please note that Paul decided to visit Rome after he witnessed the marvelous transformation of the Ephesians. Due to the doctrine working in them, they voluntarily decided to burn their many costly occult books, Acts 19 verse 21. He made this decision before he was forced to leave Ephesus because of the uproar caused by the silversmiths, Acts 19 verses 29 to 32, 40. Having covered the other ground preaching the gospel so everyone had heard from Jerusalem to Illyricum, Paul has had a great desire for many years to come to them. He plans to see them on his way to Spain, but first, he going to Jerusalem to deliver some money that the maced ANS and the Corinthians and the neighboring Achaia, southern Greece, had collected. Paul wrote Romans just before leaving to go to Jerusalem with two delegates from each contributing region including Galatia, Acts 20 verses 3 to 6. Luke joined the party in Philippi. 15 24-29 Whenever he does take his journey into Spain, he will come to visit them, enjoy their company, and be brought on his way by them. But for now, he will soon be on his way to Jerusalem to bring some money to the poor saints, Peter's group. The little flock had sold everything as Christ had told them to do so since they were supposed to be heading into Jacob's trouble, Je. 30 colon 7, Luke 12 verses 32 and 33, Acts 4 verses 34 and 35. They were anticipating going into the tribulation and would not be able to buy or sell because they would not take the mark of the beast, Revelation 13 verse 18, 16 colon 2. The Gentiles in Macedonia And Achaia had made a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem, 1526. The Gentiles are in their debt because they have been made partakers of their spiritual things, his spirit, adoptions as sons, and hope of eternal life. Spiritually, the little flock saints are in Christ and Christ is in them, John 17 verse 26, Gal. 122, Now Christ is in us and we are in him, Colossians 1 verse 27, Rom. 12 colon 5. Peter and the remnant have been placed on hold, their program has been postponed, Acts 15 verses 14 to 16, Gal. 2 colon 7 9, the Gentiles' duty is also to minister unto them in carnal things, material things, 1527, since God has postponed Israel's program and is giving the Gentiles an opportunity to believe directly on what Christ has done apart from going through Israel. Paul is also bringing the money gift for the purpose of having the little flock's goodwill and blessing so that there would be no strife between the two groups of believers. The Christians would be edified being able to do their duty and give, while the saints in Jerusalem would experience Christian love in action. After Paul had finished the task and the saints at Jerusalem had securely received the gift of money, Paul plans to swing by and visit them on his way to Spain. Paul wants churches established in all the major strategic cities. Somehow Christ must have communicated to Paul that he would have the full revelation of the mystery by the time he arrived in Rome, even if he had not written everything down yet.
And I am sure that, when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. 1529. Paul would be able to share this further revelation with the saints at Rome when he arrived. 15.30-33 Paul kindly asks them for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit, to help him by striving together with him in prayer to God for me. Prayer is work because the flesh does not want to do it. Paul believed in the power of prayer. He asked for specific prayer regarding three things, one, him to be delivered from those who do not believe in Judea, two, that the gift will be accepted by the saints, and three, that he may come to them in Rome with joy by the will of God and be refreshed with them. He prays that the God of peace would be with them and closes the main portion of the letter. Were Paul's prayers answered? Yes. Paul arrived alive in Rome after the gift was accepted, Acts 21 verses 15 to 17, 28 colon 16, and he had more revelation. Romans chapter 16 salutations and benediction as to the mystery. Romans 16 verses 1 to 6 Paul commends Phoebe, a saint that carried the letter to Rome, unto them. She served in a Pauline church at Sencria, a seaport near Corinth. He asks, Please receive her in the Lord in the gracious manner that becomes saints and help her in every possible way, for she has been a helper of many including myself. Paul then greets many of the saints with personal expressions of love. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, they had moved back to Rome. Who have for my life laid down their own necks? Why does Paul mention Priscilla first? Perhaps in the uproar, Acts 19 verse 40, Priscilla may have been braver or she may have been stronger in the doctrine. Paul thanks them publicly on the behalf of the Gentiles. Without Paul, the Gentile churches would have no further revelation from Jesus for his heavenly group. Likewise greet the church that is in their home. They had a house church. Paul mentions three or more house churches in this letter. 16:7-16 Salute Andronicus and Unia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, who are respected by the twelve apostles. When Paul talks about Andronicus and Unia, he makes it clear that they were in Christ or saved before him. 16:7 They were saved by the preaching of the little flock. This is how they were in Christ before Paul. Since we know that Paul is the first one in the body of Christ, 1 Tim 1:16. What was the gospel that they had trusted? The gospel of the kingdom. They repented, changed their minds, and believed that Jesus Christ was the King of the Jews and were baptized with water and the Holy Ghost. Acts 2 verse 38. They met Paul in prison, perhaps in Philippi. Acts 16 verse 25. Christ told Peter and the little flock that they will be in him and he will be in them. John 14 20, 17 23. However, those saints realized that God had changed dispensations and had begun working through a new apostle, Paul. They wanted to be part of what God is doing now so they joined Paul. Barnabas and Silas are examples of other little flock saints who also helped Paul. Paul mentions that. His face for a while was unknown to the churches of Judea which were in Christ, Gal. 122. Everyone who is saved is in Christ and not in Adam. We have so much more in Christ because we have the gift of his righteousness, 517. In the fullness of times, God will gather everyone who is in Christ into the new heaven and the new earth, F. 110. Paul greets Amplia as my beloved in the Lord, possibly another house church. Salute Urbane, our helper in Christ, Statues my beloved. Salute Hero Dion, my kinsman, either a Jew or a relative of Paul. Greet them that be of the household of Narcissus, which are in the Lord, possibly another house church. Salute Trophina and Trophosa, who labor in the Lord. These women helped others to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth of sound doctrine getting the gospel out. Women are to be faithful to share what they have learned about Pauline truth just like men are. 16:17-20 Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Paul implores the believers to mark, identify, name, those who cause division and offenses, cause believers to be separated from the truth by false doctrine and do wrong things. 
Avoid them. Do not listen to those who are teaching contrary to what Paul taught in this or other letters, for example, those who believe that. Body of Christ began Acts 2. Most of these pastors preach Acts 2 out of ignorance. They just don't know any better. We must remember that we were like them. They are those who do not serve the Lord Jesus Christ. These teachers do not submit to the fact that Christ made Paul the apostle of the Gentiles, 1113, and that his letters, Romans to Philemon, is Christ's doctrine to the body of Christ during the dispensation of grace, not Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. 16, 17, 18. Unless the ministry is Pauline, they are not serving Christ. 2 Cor. 11, 13 15. They just want to promote themselves and their mixed up beliefs. They do not know the truth and they care more about money to feed themselves rather than feeding other spiritual truth. They may sound eloquent and their spiritualizing of gods. Word and cute stories may sound like they are saying something of value, but they are not following Paul, 1 Cor. 1437. The so-called church fathers turned their backs to Apostle Paul and steered people away from the truth of the mystery Christ revealed to Paul for us in the body of Christ. Satan has always been against what God is doing, 1 Tim. 2 colon 4, and is busy blinding the minds of people, 2 Cor. 4 colon 3, 4. They deceive people who are not knowledgeable in the Word of God to believe anything they hear without checking it out with the final authority, the King James Bible. They are easily persuaded to follow them. One pastor wants people to have their best life now without concern for suffering for the sake of the truth so that we may serve Christ in responsible job positions in eternity. Paul is glad for their sakes to hear that the believers in Rome are well known outside Rome for their faithfulness to follow Paul's sound doctrine, 1 colon 8. But Paul wants them to be wise unto that which is good, Paul's sound doctrine, and simple concerning evil, false doctrine. Focus on truth, not error. Just like Christ, we can have faith in God's plan. God has told us to live by allowing Christ to live through us, 12 colon 1, 2. Christ liveth in me. Galatians 2 verse 20. So now we live by the faith of the Son of God, offering our bodies as a living sacrifice. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. 1620. Paul expects Christ to reveal the entire mystery to him soon. 1529. With his spirit living through us using doctrine we bruise Satan and his false ministers under our feet. Satan and his workers cannot stand Paul's powerful truth. It is in Paul's epistles that Christ's triumph over him is made known, Colossians 2 verse 15. But Satan does what he can to conceal Pauline truth. When believers are strong in the truth with Christ working through them laboring to get the message out, Satan is bruised. However, when Satan and his angels are cast out and we replace them, then Satan will be truly bruised under out feet, Revelation 12 verses 7 to 9. 16,21-24 Some brothers with Paul, Timotheus his fellow worker, Lucius, Jason, and Sosipater his kinsman, and the secretary or amanuensis who wrote down the dictated letter, Tertius, say hello. Paul only wrote Galatians with his own. Hand, Gal, 611. Gaius my host, and the whole church, at Corinth, salute you, probably the Gaius in 1 Cor. 114, Erastus the Chamberlain or City Treasurer in Corinth, 2 Tim, 420, and Cordus a brother says hello. 16 27 Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel, Paul ends with a benediction to God. God can establish the believer by three things, 1, my gospel, 2, the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, and 3, by the scriptures and the prophets meaning all scripture, both the Old and New Testament, outside Paul's epistles rightly divided, as the scriptures relate from a Pauline perspective. Christ's living spirit in us has the power to use his living word in us because we are his workmanship, f. 2.10, my gospel, is the imputed righteousness of Christ, justification by faith. 
When we believe Paul's gospel a transaction occurs, God imputes our sins on Christ and imputes the Son's righteousness, His life, Spirit, to us, 3 colon 22 dash 26, 4 colon 22 dash 25, 5 colon 1, 1 cor, 15 colon 3, 4, 2 cor, 5 21. When we have the righteousness of Christ, God declares us perfectly righteous and justified so we can then come before the Holy Father without being obliterated. We have been translated out of Adam into Christ and out of Satan's kingdom into the kingdom of his dear son, 1 Cor, 1522, Colossians 1 verses 13 and 14. Paul calls it my gospel to distinguish it from the gospel of the kingdom given to the twelve. My gospel is the gospel of Christ and the gospel of grace, and the audience Paul preached to is the uncircumcision, the Gentiles. Paul's gospel is the only gospel that saves today. Paul is the only apostle of the Gentiles, 1113. He says that Christ died for our sins, the Gentiles in mystery. Paul makes it clear Christ died to be a ransom for all, 1 Tim, 2 colon 6. In this age, anyone can be saved by believing what Christ has accomplished for him. And the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest. God has now revealed the mystery through Paul, f. 3 colon 1-9. Paul calls his doctrine the mystery because it was kept secret until it was revealed to him. Jesus Christ himself revealed the mystery to Paul. He did not receive it from another man such as Peter, and he didn't need another man to teach him, Gal. 1 colon 1, 11, 12. The mystery revelation was not known until Christ first revealed it to Paul in Acts 9. He was first, 1 Tim, 1 16, the mystery was unsearchable, f. 3 colon 8, no creature was as surprised as Satan when Christ returned after a year in heaven and saved his worst enemy on the road to Damascus. What? Satan thought, that is not what the scriptures say, that is unprophesied. That was not what was supposed to happen next. Where is God's wrath on his people? God defeated Satan by keeping a secret. The main mystery is the formation of the body of Christ during the dispensation of grace to live in heaven. Compare this to what Peter says in Acts 3 verses 19 to 21. The mystery is the entire body of doctrine given to Paul by revelation from the risen, ascended, glorified Lord Jesus Christ, Romans to Philemon and by the scriptures of the prophets. The rest of the Bible, prophecy, the scriptures outside of Paul's writings, both the Old Testament and New Testament scriptures, rightly divided. To be more clear, Genesis to Acts 9 and Hebrews to Revelation are prophecy. According to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. God has commanded that all nations believe the gospel that he made known to Paul and then come to the knowledge of the truth, 1 Tim, 2 colon 4. Paul progressively received the revelation that God is now forming the body of Christ, the one new man, f. 215, during the dispensation of grace, to reign with Christ in the heavenly places. So all people can believe the sound doctrine Christ gave us through Paul. To God only wise, be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. God alone is wise. It was Satan that weakened the nations, ISA. 1412, but God kept a secret from Satan and caught him in his own craftiness, 1 Cor. 319, howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world, that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. 1 Corinthians 2 verses 6 to 8. In his wisdom, God kept the mystery formation of the body of Christ a secret from Satan because if he knew he would lose the heavenly places along with the earth he would not have crucified the Lord of glory. It was the cross of Christ, the Son's death for mankind's sins and resurrection that redeemed both groups of believers who will live in heaven and earth. It was God's plan to save us and glorify his Son in both spheres which was determined by the Godhead before the foundation of the world, Acts 2 verse 23, f. 
1 colon 9, 10, 1 Peter 1 verses 18 to 20. God is wise and we can trust the Father and the Son to rule wisely. Paul gives God all the glory through Jesus Christ and so should we because he has done everything that was necessary to save us. Amen. We have a closer walk with him when we understand his word more precisely. Appendix. One year extension of mercy for Israel. Although the prophetic clock according to Daniel's timeline stopped at the cross, Israel received a bonus year of mercy from God. In addition to asking the Father to forgive them because of their ignorance while on the cross, Jesus had also pleaded with the Father to give his people one more year to repent and receive him as their Messiah. Jesus said, A certain man, God the Father, had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit, faith, thereon, and found none. Then said he, God the Father, unto the dresser of his vineyard, God the Son, behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, Israel, and find none, cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? And he, the Son, answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, give Israel one more year, till I shall dig about it, and dung, fertilized by the power of the Holy Ghost, it, and if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down, cut off Israel for a season, Luke 13 verses 6 to 9. But Peter and the disciples of Christ, the little remnant, the little flock, did have faith in him, so the kingdom was taken from the unbelieving nation of Israel and given to the remnant of believing Israel. Therefore say I, Jesus, unto you, the religious leaders of the nation of Israel, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you, and given to a nation, the little flock, bringing forth the fruits, faith, thereof. Matt 2143 The little flock, believing remnant, received the kingdom. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Luke 12 verse 32 when Peter asked Jesus what he would receive for his faithfulness, Jesus answered, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me, in the regeneration, when the earth is regenerated in the millennium, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye, the twelve apostles, also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel, Matthew 19 verse 28. Three times a year Israel was to keep a feast to the Lord. These feasts are a picture of God's plan to redeem them. Christ has already fulfilled Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruits, held in Abib, the first month. The next, Pentecost, 50 days later, was fulfilled in Acts 2. The Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, and Feast of Tabernacles, in the seventh month, will be fulfilled when Israel is gathered into their land, the nation is forgiven, and Messiah rules and lives with them. The final feasts, as we have learned, have been postponed. Gospel. Mystery of iniquity. Time passed. About the author. She was saved in 1990. She became not only a King James Bible user, but a King James Bible believer in 2014. She has more than 25 years of experience teaching the Bible. 18 of those years were with the Awana Clubs where she earned her citation award for Bible memorization. In 2015, she was introduced to Pauline Dispensational Truth by watching Les Feldick on YouTube. After learning the basics of rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15, she learned more from the Bible and Richard Jordan and his Grace School of the Bible. A retired nurse midwife, she has devoted the rest of her life to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. F. 3 colon 9. She teaches a Bible study in her home which is available on Facebook and YouTube, MarianneManley.com. Her joy after understanding the Bible better led her to edify the body of Christ by writing God's Secret in 2017. Romans, a concise commentary, 1 Corinthians, a commentary, 2 Corinthians, a commentary, Galatians, a commentary, Treasure Hunt Volume 1, Romans to Galatians, Ephesians a Commentary, Philippians, Colossians, Philemon Commentary, Treasure Hunt Volume 2, Paul's Prison Epistles, Why Was the Earth Without Form, Void, and Dark, Just As God Said for Children, The Certainty of the Pre-Tribulation Rapture, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians Commentary, Paul's Pastoral Epistles, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Philemon Commentary, 
Treasure Hunt Volume 3, Paul's T. Books, Acts of the Apostles Commentary Part 1, 2, 3, Miss the Rapture? Read this commentary on Hebrew and how to be saved made simple, why the King James Bible is the Holy Bible and the rightly dividing study guides. Many people have all her books. Other books by Marianne Manley. God's Secret A Primer with Pictures for How to Rightly Divide the Word of Truth on Amazon.com in Black and White Edition and in Spanish El Secreto de Dios. Why the King James Bible is the Holy Bible. Rightly Dividing Colossians and Philemon Study Guide Rightly Dividing Philippians Study Guide Rightly Dividing Ephesians Study Guide Rightly Dividing Galatians Study Guide Rightly Dividing 2 Corinthians Study Guide Rightly Dividing 1 Corinthians Study Guide Rightly Dividing Romans Study Guide Romans, a concise commentary, also in a black and white edition 1 Corinthians, a commentary 2 Corinthians, a commentary. Galatians, a commentary. Ephesians, a commentary. Philippians, Colossians, Philemon commentary. The certainty of the pre-tribulation rapture, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, Paul's pastoral epistles, Timothy letters, Titus, and Philemon commentary. Treasure Hunt Volume 1, Commentary Only Romans to Galatians. Treasure Hunt Volume 2, Commentary Only on Paul's Prison Epistles. Treasure Hunt Volume 3, Commentary on Paul's Tea Books. Why was the earth without form, void, and dark? Just as God said. Acts of the Apostles Commentary Part 1, 2, 3. Missed the Rapture? Read this commentary on Hebrews. How to be saved made simple, this booklet is perfect for our lost loved ones. Could God have a 7,000-year plan for mankind? Also in black and white in AD 34 the year Jesus died for all, same content as could God, in 9 by 6 size. The author may be contacted by email at mariannemanley at sbcglobal.net. Please visit her website, www.mariannemanley.com, free.pdf. Files, follow her on Facebook at facebook.com slash marianne.manley.7 and God's secret Facebook page at facebook.com slash God's secreted primer with pictures. Find her on YouTube, just type in her name and find her teaching the Bible. A chapter at a time, or on salvation, rightly dividing, and the rapture her YouTube channel or truth be told, or call 858-273-2049.